Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 4 inch HDMI display for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now in the last few weeks I've gotten a hold of a few different screens because I'm trying to finish up this Raspberry Pi 4 project that I got going on. It's a retro handheld console but I personally can't find the right screen for it. I've reviewed a few from a 5 inch DSi display that was non-IPS to a 5.5 inch AMOLED display from Waveshare that looked absolutely beautiful but when it was set up we had major screen tearing. I would personally rather go with a 5 inch or a 5.5 inch screen, but this 4 inch screen is an IPS display and it actually looks very promising. Now this is a touch screen display, but it is IPS. Up top we do have brightness control. We also have a micro USB, full size HDMI in, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, some GPIO to power the screen and enable touch on it, and it also has a header for a fan. This display is actually sold as a case kit, so it does come with an acrylic case. We also have our little HDMI adapter. Now this is very important for the Raspberry Pi 4. Full size HDMI on one side and micro HDMI on the other. Comes with a small plastic stylus, user manual, our little 40 millimeter fan, and our acrylic case. I picked this kit up on Amazon for $32 and I figured it was worth a shot. Now in order to get this screen up and running you don't necessarily need the case but I'm going to go ahead and assemble this whole unit for the video and we'll give it a quick review. I'm really interested in this display mainly because it's a smaller IPS display but I do wish this came in a 5 inch form factor. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these parts ready for assembly and then we'll get right into it. So I've just laid everything out. It does come with a user manual. It's actually really easy to assemble. I've also removed all of the protective film on the acrylic and the backing for the heat sinks. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and throw all these heat sinks on that they send with this. One for the CPU, one for the RAM, one for the Ethernet controller, and one for the USB controller. So now that we have all that out of the way, it's time to start the assembly of the case. Now this comes with a few different standoffs. The shorter ones are going to go facing outwards from the bottom of the Raspberry Pi 4. This is going to allow us to attach it to the base of the acrylic case. So I'll go ahead and throw these on. There's four here along with four nuts. So now that I have the standoffs attached to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi 4, it's time to grab the base of the acrylic case and we'll attach it with four of the included screws. They do offer a little slot here so you can easily access the SD card, but now it's time to get this screen installed. Now I'm going to leave the fan out of this. Because basically there's no way to hard mount this. They're expecting us to kind of hold it here with double sided sticky tape. And personally I won't need the fan and I don't want to make any more noise than I need to. So in order to get this screen installed all we really need to do is plug it into the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. This also has a little side mount. I guess this will kind of cradle the screen in the case itself. And now it's time to plug in our HDMI. Everything's sitting pretty flush. Full size HDMI to micro HDMI on the Pi 4. Just got to get it lined up and plug it right in. All that's left to do is place the top half of the case on. All we need to do is screw in these longer standoffs and it should line right up. So even though this is an HDMI display, I still need to mess around with the config.txt or I could download their pre-configured rasping image. And I think I'm going to do that for this because it does have touch enabled with it. I'm also going to test out RetroPie and Laka. So overall, the assembled case looks pretty good. Everything's put together very well here. One thing to note here is this uses GPIO and HDMI, so it's really hard to get it any thinner than the screen and the Pi itself. So I don't think this is a great option for, let's say, a retro handheld. But as long as everything functions properly, this could turn out to be a nice little screen for certain projects on the Raspberry Pi 4. So here it is. Everything's up and running. I'm using their pre-built image for Raspbian. They also have an image for Kali Linux if that's what you want to use. But it already has the touch drivers built in and I really didn't want to mess around with it. If you don't really need touch with Raspbian, all you really have to do is set the HDMI mode to 480 by 800 and rotate the screen and you'll have Raspbian up and running. But if you want touch and the on-screen keyboard, you will have to install their drivers. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. It's just really easier to download their pre-built image and update it once you install it. 
And one issue I did run into is when I'm using their pre-built image with all of these drivers installed, I can't use the secondary HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi. But with a base image of Raspbian, you could set this screen up here and have your monitor connected at the same time, but you won't have touch enabled on the small screen. But personally, I'm not a big fan of using a small screen like this with Raspbian for everyday use, so I wouldn't even need the touch drivers installed. But if this is the way you wanna use it, definitely use that stylus because using your finger here just doesn't work out as well as using the small stylus, and that's why they included it. But overall, when you're using this pen here, touch response is great. Everything works really well here. I got Wi-Fi connected. I fully updated my Raspbian build from their pre-built images, so I do have some games installed. The resolution of the screen is only 480 by 800, but it's really sharp. I mean, it looks pretty good for a small screen. Color representation is nice, and viewing angles are amazing because this is an IPS display. Now, one thing I always like to test when I get these screens in is screen tearing. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a browser. I want to head over to YouTube, and then we'll open up a screen tearing test just to see how the screen performs over HDMI with the Pi 4. I have connected a wireless keyboard and mouse to this, and overall, I'm not seeing any screen tearing in this test here. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be a little bit of screen tearing every once in a while, but if you've watched some of my previous videos, this is looking pretty good for these small HDMI screens. Unfortunately, I didn't hook up any speakers to this, but we do have that 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the screen and the Pi itself, so you could connect speakers or headphones. This is just a quick YouTube video playing here at 480p. Viewing angles are really nice here, but I do notice a little bit of glare here because of the touch panel that's over the IPS display. This is a separated touch panel. It can be desoldered, and I might do that down the road because I'm not going to be using any touch functionality with this screen here. It would definitely completely alleviate that glare you just saw. So it's working great with Raspbian. Let's see if we can get this to work with RetroPie. Now I will leave my config.txt in the description so you can just copy and paste it. Well, I have some bad news for RetroPie using the Pi 4 and this screen. As you can see, the screen is set up in a vertical orientation straight out of the box. When I'm running Raspbian, I do have to add display rotate equals 3 to get it into landscape mode, or I can just change it from the display options from within Raspbian. Unfortunately, with RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi 4, I believe Emulation Station relies very heavily on the fake KMS driver for the GPU, and I've come to the conclusion that that KMS driver ignores any kind of display rotate. No matter what settings I'm using here, either with RetroPie or Laka, when I boot it up, everything's looking really normal, but as soon as I get into Emulation Station, the screen still thinks it's in a vertical orientation. And if I comment out fake KMS from within the config file, Emulation Station won't even boot. I got a feeling that this could be fixed in XRandar, but I've never used it with RetroPie, so I don't even really know where to start. If you've messed around with it with the Raspberry Pi 4 and RetroPie and you know how to fix this issue, please let me know in the comments below. But as it sits right now, there's not a super easy fix to get Laka or RetroPie running on this screen properly in landscape mode. So in the end, it's a great little screen for Raspbian or Kali Linux. You can always download their pre-built images and they work great. But if you're looking to pick this up for RetroPie or Laka, which is exactly why I picked this up, I would definitely stay away from it, at least for now. It really comes down to the GPU drivers used in the Raspberry Pi 4, and there should be an easy fix to this by now. The Pi 4 has been on the market for a while, but there's still issues here and there. So my hunt for the perfect Raspberry Pi 4 handheld screen still continues. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching, and I was really hoping this would work with RetroPie and Laka straight out of the box, but unfortunately, it really doesn't. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.